Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Tuesday, August the 4th. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Be gracious to me, O God, for man tramples on me. All day long an attacker oppresses me. My enemies trample on me all day long, for many attack me proudly. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? Our Old Testament reading this morning is our continuance of our reading in 1 Samuel chapter 18. The next day a harmful spirit from God rushed upon Saul, and he raved within his house while David was playing the lyre, as he did day by day. Saul had his spear in his hand, and Saul hurled the spear, for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David evaded him twice. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. So Saul removed him from his presence and made him a commander of a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And David had success in all his undertakings, for the Lord was with him. And when Saul saw that he had great success, he stood fearful, in fearful awe of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, for he went out and came in before them. Then Saul said to David, Here is my elder daughter Merab. I will give her to you for a wife. Only be valiant for me and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul thought, let not my hand be against him, but let the hand of the Philistines be against him. And David said to Saul, Who am I, and who are my relatives, my father's clan in Israel, that I should be son-in-law to the king? But at the time when Mirab, Saul's daughter, should have been given up to David, she was given to Adriel, the Metholathite, for a wife. Now Saul's daughter, Michal, loved David, and they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. Saul thought, Let me give her to him, that she may be a snare for him, and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Therefore Saul said to David a second time, You shall now be my son-in-law. And Saul commanded his servants, Speak to David in private, and say, Behold, the king has delight in you, and all his servants love you. Now then, become the king's son-in-law. And Saul's servants spoke these words in the ears of, David, ears of David. And David said, Does it seem to you a little thing to become the king's son-in-law, since I am a poor man and have no reputation? And the servants of Saul told him, Thus and so did David speak. Then Saul said, Thus shall you say to David, The king desires no bride price except a hundred foreskins of the Philistines, that he may be avenged of the king's enemies. Now Saul thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines, and when his servants told David these words, it pleased David well to be the king's son-in-law. Before the time had expired, David arose and went among, along with his men, and killed two hundred of the Philistines. And David brought their foreskins, which were given in full number to the king, that he might become the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him his daughter Michal for a wife. But when Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David, and that Michal, Saul's daughter, loved him, Saul was even more afraid of David. So Saul was David's enemy, enemy continually. Then the princes of the Philistines came out to battle, and as often as they came on to David, they had more success than all the servants of Israel, of Saul, so that his name was highly esteemed. Our writing this morning is from a document called the Didache, uh, which simply means teaching. Uh, the subtitle 
uh, often you will see it as the teachings of the Twelve Apostles. It's one of those things that's interesting that's outside the Bible, yet it doesn't contain anything in it that you won't find in the Bible. In fact, many people have remarked it, this should actually be in the Bible. Uh, it's that good and it is that true to God's Word. Uh, and it was lost for hundreds hundreds of years and got discovered in, I think, the 18th century, around the middle of the 18th century. And it was very surprising because in some other countries like Ethiopia, where there's a lot of Coptic Christians, they have it. So once they found this first one, they've found a couple more copies of it in different places. And it is about... I believe this is mostly going to be about the Lord's Supper. And it says, Now about the Eucharist. This is how to give thanks. First, in connection with the cup, we thank you, our Father, for the holy vine of David, your child, which you have revealed through Jesus, your child. To you be glory forever. Then, in connection with the peace, broken off the loaf, we thank you, our Father, for the life and knowledge which you have revealed through Jesus, your child. To you be glory forever. As this piece of bread was scattered over the hills and then was brought together and made one, so let your church be brought together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory and the power through Jesus Christ forever. You must not let anyone eat or drink of your Eucharist except those baptized in the Lord's name. For in reference to this, the Lord said, Do not give what is sacred to dogs. After you have finished the sacrament, say grace in this way. We thank you, Holy Father, for your sacred name, which you have lodged in our hearts, and for the knowledge and faith and immortality which you have revealed through Jesus, your child. To you be glory forever. Almighty Master, you have created everything for the sake of your name and have given men food and drink to enjoy that they may thank you. But to us, you have given spiritual food and drink and eternal life through Jesus, your child. Above all, we thank you that you are mighty. To you be glory forever. Remember, Lord, your church, to save it from all evil and to make it perfect by your love. Make it holy and gather it together from the four winds into your kingdom, which you have made ready for it. For yours is the power and the glory forever. Let grace come and let this world pass away. Hosanna to the God of David. We now join together in the Apostles' Creed at the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our Tuesday prayer, as always, uh, has to do with um, those who have been persecuted for the faith, the martyrs, and so forth. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we praise your fathomless mercy with which you take pity on sinful men. All the prophets and apostles preach this to, to us in your holy word. Let our hope not be put to shame when we pray to you for all who suffer at this time. For behold, the evil one has become mighty, and the great ones of this world rule often with unrighteousness. O God, who in former times caused your saints to overcome injustice, strengthen also today all who would stand in need of your help. Grant that all prisoners of war, held as slaves and sacrifices of earthly wrath, may return to their home. Stand by all refugees and homeless people, and be their justice. 
Be a father to the widows and orphans with your strong protection. Go through bars and fences to those who are imprisoned for the sake of your name. Strengthen them for a good witness, and let them not waver in the confession of your name. Teach us through their example and the example of so many holy martyrs to be ever watchful of the confession of your Son's name. Let us not be put to shame when the evil foe lays his hand on us. But if it is your will that we be persecuted for confessing Jesus is our Lord and only Savior, then support us in your grace, that we may withstand all trials and grant us peaceful rest. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people, that we may be governed and preserved evermore in, the, in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.